it's pretty cool to have a museum yeah. all that stuff. That, you know? I actually did a review on the first episode and I said, one of the things I said was, uh, you know, I'd actually like to investigate his museum. You that know, would be kind of cool. When there if was all these pieces are haunted, <laughs> his like, museum's got to be crazy. Like 13th Ghost. <laughs> now, how do you contain that, though? You sprinkle salt around <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The outside yeah. of the building or something, or what? You, know, you, you walk into his museum and stuff. Play churches <laughs> on all the corners of the property. <laughs> uh, That's something he needs to talk about. On <laughs> <laughs> how do you contain all that? Uh, right here, this was a remnants of an old uh, hoop skirt right here. See that the straps would go over the shoulders and the, the hoops would go out and the dress over top. Hmm. Before it gets too dark, I'm going to take a look up through there. It's a neat well, vision. That's pretty cool. Yeah. During the, the hot months in the summertime, they'd open the windows up in the cupola or the watchtower, and all the hot air in the house would go right up through the This room right here was uh, George Will Sam's bedroom. Uh, closet space behind me over here. Uh, bathroom, indoor plumbing, 1850 style. A lead pipe led to a copper tank up in the, in the ladies' bathroom. He was able to run his water through gravity, out of the house. Of course, they had codes back in, so where the hell it went, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, this was That's during the Underground Railroad years. Uh, he'd be sleeping in his bed, and he'd hear a tap on the floor. What that was. An agent had just brought in some runaway slaves into the basin. The guy cool. would get a broomstick or something and knock on the ceiling. He'd get out of bed, grab a server or two with food and water, go down there and greet these people and uh, take them down the hallway where they'd be staying for the night. He passed away in this room, 1879, uh, August 31st, of a brain fever. As far as paranormal stuff with this room, haven't heard much. Uh, there was one little story, a, a team did catch what looked like a shadow figure of a little boy right across the, the room over there to here. They had a camera set up down the hallway here. I thought I had an excellent one. Just last weekend, I caught a face looking out of the corner of the daughter's bedroom. Came back here, I mean, you know what this thing looked like? You know the the, the Scream movies with the other oh, masks, yeah. very popular? That would be the creepy face. to see. That's what this thing was. I blew it up, you know, zoomed in on it. Got back here the next weekend to do another tour. Took a picture of the same thing. Got up there, and it was like someone had wiped stuff off the window. And the way the smum. I talked to you a little bit about this area. I was describing the servants area behind here. Um, kitchen, two separate stairs, a couple other small rooms. And this was the night before Halloween last year. Four people here for the night. I heard a noise, and I know the noises of this place. I've been here for several years. I know the humidity pops, and you know the windows that rattle. The, the old wind. country house feel. Exactly, exactly. Well, I heard an interesting noise. It grabbed my attention, and I asked if anyone in the group just heard anything. The woman standing across from me said that she did. She said it was a definite sound of a little girl going, uh-uh. And that's what sent the little chill up my spine because that's exactly what I had just heard. And we both agreed that it came from above us. Top of the stairs, second floor landing area. It's almost like something was keeping an eye on us or something. But it was a, it would really, it really did sound like a, a little girl disagreeing with something. That's, and, it's always good when you hear somebody else hears it. Yes. You're yes. like, oh, I'm not going Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm very careful about not telling them what I heard first. Yeah, that, that, I want to see what they... But, yeah, servants' quarters, it's 12 foot high ceilings now. We've had different requests from past ghost hunting groups that have been here year in, year out over the years that to have this area open again. It was closed off for the longest time as a, as a junk room, as you could see. We were able to carve a path out so people can actually go back in there a little bit. So what was the reasoning for wanting this room? You know, they have no tip, really good reasons. I, I really don't know. Um, apparently, there was a lot of experiences in that area. There was a an interesting uh, story that was told on the Ghost Adventures episode. I've been told that story too. It sounds kind of outrageous to me, but um, there was a group spending some time across over on that other side of the wall. 
Um, apparently, a woman was sitting here, her husband in this corner, her friends over here, but a bit over on that side of the wall. Now something grabbed a hold back this girl's neck, wouldn't let her stand up. She's struggling a little bit. Her husband comes over, tries to help. He gets shoved back. Friends come over, they get shoved back. What? Finally, she was allowed to get up and run. They all run down the hallway, grab their stuff, and they say cleansing prayers and get in their cars and they're gone. Now, that almost sounds kind of like Hollywood to me. It sounds a little bit too, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's a story that, a typical story that's been told differently. Ever. Yeah. But, it had a little bit too much flair about it to be I'm, believable. I'm one of the guys that it has to happen to me. I have to see it to believe it. Yeah. I've never felt like a force. So, push or yeah, yeah. If, I, if that happens to me, I'll be able to believe a story like that more. But yeah. because I haven't experienced it, it's, it's yeah. like EBPs, though, I believe those 100% because yeah. that's, I, it's, it's different people that come and visit this place. While the people that see it on TV, they get entertained by that kind of story. And it's like they're scared, they're, they're scared to death to go to bed, you know? But the people that are actually into this all the time, they're kind of like, well, oh, whatever. If it happens, it happens. <laughs> you know. But there was a little interesting story with this room that happened with me in this room here. I was called in to do a tour last year. It's a group that never been here before. The guy on that tour must have taken about 200 pictures before we got up here. Jeez. Back in the day, I thought that was kind of rude. But nowadays, it's like, hey, we keep taking pictures. Go. Maybe something will happen. This guy takes a picture of the doorway, and he's like, oh, I think I got something here for you. So I'm, I'm like, okay, orbs, dust particles, oh, okay, I'll let them ride with it. That's what I do, you know, I get my look. And it's going to sound like a bad horror movie or something, I swear. That doorway, above that doorway, that on the door. A face, beard, two eyes, nose. I mean, this is the first thing I've ever seen before. We're talking about a guy that's like taking a picture and going, hey, what do you think about that? Um, hmm. Who it was, I can't say. I know George Adams had a beard in his later years before he died. I can't say it's him. The guy saw a beard. We all saw a beard. Two eyes, nose. Up higher? Like right in here. Uh, you know. So it was kind of like his head, but the rest of the body was. Yeah, was gone. gone. It's like the, out of a cheap horror movie, you know? <laughs> it's like a head. There, there it is, the head. Uh, yeah, it was, it was weird. I'm skeptical about things that people bring back to us to show. Because they leave here, they go home, then they come back the next year and say, look what we caught the last time we were here. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit skeptical about it. But the things that happen on tours, people take a picture and say, look, we're... This right here was a uh, stairwell that led down to the kitchen area. Of course, people scare themselves all the time. You know, there's a spring on that door. People don't realize that when they're kicking around here at 2 o'clock in the morning and scare themselves. Well, I was telling you about 1969 and the gravel company. That's where they, that's where they dug, right in there. This land used to go straight out out to the river, and one of the one of the ways that the uh, Underground Railroad came through here was to follow that Skegum River from down south up to this area. And they had, from that from right about out there where those trees are, they would start to light up um, lanterns, campfires, trying to signal the guy upstairs in the cupola. And if it were safe to come in, he'd light up, and they, they'd come across the field there. They'd be brought in through the basement through that hatch down there. Sometimes I wonder what this gravel company might have found out there. Away. I've heard some horror stories of people just throwing things in the chipper, you know. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that would have been something cool to hang on to, you know. Trinkets, tools that were given to these people from the next stop down the road, you know. Who so knows? they drive them through that. And then down into the side. Mm -hmm. So they Nighttime. came from the train. They, they, the train? Is that what you're saying? That, no, that. Where did they bring them? That, uh, well, they would follow the river. Okay. On,
probably on foot or horse and carriage, you know, in the back of a wagon under floorboards of wagons sometimes. Um, boats, sometimes they'd use boats to go up the river with, with people on them. Um, if there was, with this place, people will say, oh, there was a tunnel that led down to the river. And we've never seen any evidence of an actual tunnel that led to the river. I mean, the, the soil around here is very sandy. Um, it's been too much of an operation for something like that. Uh, you know, it was just in the dead of night, you know, three, three, four o'clock in the morning that these people were on the move to the places, you know. Neat nighttime here. Sometimes a full moon be behind the branches, fog rolling across the grounds. You get really atmospheric very quickly. That's pretty cool. Well, this area, it's an uh, isolated room off the main part of the house. Uh, it's known to be a quarantine room or sick room. When you got sick, this was before the day of antibiotics. To protect the rest of your family, you had to isolate the sick. And that's what that was for. Now, he had a wife, seven children, a staff of servants he had to protect, you know. Um, someone got sick, so he really ended up. I can't tell you as far as who passed away in here. Uh, I don't know really that much. That's kind of foggy information history right there. Uh, different people, though, over the years have sworn that they've seen a face or two looking out of these windows up here from the grounds. They'll look up and see faces. And, uh, to me, it's a little too close to the trees. Uh, you know, some people sense. will see faces in the windows because there's trees right next to, you know, reflections of leaves and that kind of thing. I can't say that for sure, but people do get weird feelings in here. Um, yeah. Some people outright refuse to come in here. Sensitives, that kind of thing. I don't know if you believe in any of that. That's something I'm skeptical about, too. Anyway, I'll show you the, uh, the main part of the house. Yeah, we, that's Bedrooms. something we said we would never do. Have a, a Bring medium sensitives. on the... Yeah, you know, whatever, yeah. Just, no. They can be entertaining and everything, but... <laughs> they, that's what they do on TV. That's another TV thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. Are we the only two that ever investigated this? Or has there been two, two other people, like... Less than eight. Well, this right here was the ladies' bedroom, or Mary's bedroom. This right here was the second wife, of George. Um, he built this place in honor of her and his new life with the second wife right here. Uh, after he died in 79, she took her inheritance money, moved back to Zanesville to be close with her sister for the rest of her days. Then the place became hers. This over here is uh, Anna. This was the oldest daughter of George Adams. She moved in here with her husband, William Evans Cox. If you remember from her history, it was her husband that ran off to the west. Uh, got left to her by herself, uh, struggled, sad woman. Um, she passed away in this room. Uh, she tried to walk across some ice somewhere. Slipped, fell, broke her hip, and died of pneumonia in this room. Um, reports in this room, people will claim to hear footsteps when they're by themselves investigating in here. Um, EVPs, there have been an occasional sighting or two of apparition of a woman in this room. The woman in black. Um, there's all kinds of stories with her. A woman seen in the black gown. Many people believe it's her. Uh, who knows? That's a good possibility. Right where you're standing at, you can let's take a look around, you'll see plaster. Remember I was telling you they poured plaster in between the first and second floor? I can actually see a little bit of that through here. So it's a little, it's a, it's a solid uh, floor we got. 